Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this new announcement from the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below of a completely new type of an explosion somewhere out there in outer space. An explosion that the scientists refer to as a micronova and that, just like other types of nova, involves a white dwarf. And also a white dwarf that generally possesses some kind of a partner from whom it can usually steal a lot of mass. But unlike other nova that usually involve an entire white dwarf, in this case a micronova seems to be extremely localized and produce approximately a million times less energy. Which is of course why it took so long for the scientists to discover this, because it wasn't really until the advances in modern technology that it was possible to finally see this. And in this case it was discovered around three separate systems. So let's analyze and discuss this particular discovery in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the basics. The idea behind NOVA itself. Such as the iconic NOVA of 1901 of GK Pierci you see right here. So first, today is believed that most of the NOVA out there usually form in a very similar way. They're going to involve a white dwarf and a much larger star. And as the larger star starts to lose its mass, usually due to the evolution of the star as it increases in size and as its outer edges start to touch the area known as the Roche lobe, a lot of the mass from the outer shell of the larger star is going to start transferring to the white dwarf, creating the accretion disk around it and also accumulating in the disk and at some point even going onto the white dwarf itself. And as all of this hydrogen from the star accumulates on the surface of the white dwarf, it creates a relatively thin type of an atmosphere on the surface with a lot of super compressed but also very hot hydrogen. And when you get hydrogen that's compressed and super hot, you get fusion. A huge thermonuclear explosion occurs on the surface of a white dwarf, producing huge amounts of light, producing a lot of energy, and usually increasing the brightness and the power of the star for at least a few months. Here is for example Nova Eridani of 2009. And today it's generally believed that many of these nova are what's known as recurrent nova, but the actual repetition or recurrence could take anywhere from a few years up to hundreds or thousands of years. With one famous example, the nova known as RS of Yuki, and there's actually a video about this nova somewhere on the channel as well, possibly in the description below being one of the most well-studied nova out there, occurring roughly around every 15 years or so, with the most recent explosion of this nova being in 2021 when it was actually studied by several teams in a lot of detail. But the thing about these types of nova is, well first of all, is that they tend to happen on the entire surface of the white dwarf, with essentially the whole surface being covered by this hydrogen that goes into fusion and explodes, but at the same time they also tend to last much longer, at least several weeks, sometimes even several months, and will generally produce enough light to be visible from a completely different galaxy. For example, quite a lot of different nova have already been detected from our neighbor the Andromeda galaxy and from some other nearby galaxies as well. But now the scientists have identified another type of a very interesting explosion that happens around certain white dwarfs. And in this case, only white dwarfs that possess extremely powerful magnetic fields able to produce the vortices you see right here that tend to sort of concentrate the matter in just two regions, the polar regions. This is actually somewhat similar to how a lot of other stars usually grow when they're young as they sort of acquire mass from around the accretion disk around the star. As a matter of fact, this is generally how a lot of different objects grow in the universe. Even black holes tend to have very powerful magnetic fields that they often use to sort of project a lot of matter along the polar region. And this is usually how a lot of astrophysical jets are produced as well. So the guidance of the magnetic fields of various matter in the universe is a somewhat well known and somewhat well understood phenomenon. But I guess nobody really predicted that it could also happen around certain white dwarfs. And nobody could even predict that these types of micro thermonuclear explosions can actually occur in much smaller calibers and be driven by very different types of phenomena. So what exactly are these micronova, these unusual events? Well, once again, these are very powerful explosions, but on extremely small scales, approximately a million times less powerful than a typical nova, which by itself is already like a million times less strong than a typical supernova. So this is kind of how small this is in comparison to some of the more powerful supernova we've seen so far. And in this case, when the scientists were looking at some of the star data from the iconic NASA's test telescope, 
the space telescope that's currently looking at the night skies and trying to discover various exoplanets out there, the scientists in this case discovered an unusual bright flash visible in optical light lasting for just a few hours. As if the star itself suddenly increased in brightness quite dramatically, but for an extremely short period of time. And though at first the scientists thought that this was just a fluke or maybe something unusual happened to that particular star, they were then able to find very similar events happening around at least two more stars, with all three being similar in one single way. Two of them were from very well-known white dwarfs, with the third one later confirmed by one of the telescopes to also have a white dwarf on the inside with all three white dwarfs also having a partner from whom they were stealing mass. And by using the observations from the ESO's Very Large Telescope, located in Chile, the scientists were later able to confirm that all three events were somewhat similar and were definitively produced in an extremely similar fashion. All three flashes were produced on the surface of a white dwarf, but in this case in a very localized type of an event. They were very likely produced along the polar regions and specifically in those regions along the magnetic poles where all of the lines come together and are able to bring a lot of the material in a very localized, very small spot on the surface of the white dwarf. And so instead of depositing the material along the entire surface, like on a typical white dwarf, because of very powerful magnetic fields in this case, the material is only deposited along the north or south pole and as all of this accumulates, at some point it reaches the critical limit where the fusion happens and the explosion occurs. But all of this is on very small scales compared to a typical nova. And also all of this of course requiring a white dwarf with very very powerful magnetic fields able to direct all of the mass from the accretion disk into two regions on the surface. With the magnetic field in this case being responsible for all of this funneling. But how exactly the white dwarfs funnel all of this material onto the surface is not really that clear yet. It's also not clear how strong of a magnetic field the white dwarf has to have. What is clear though is that it does seem to produce optical luminosity and also UV luminosity that increases um, the brightness of the star quite dramatically by at least a thousand times. But all of this only lasts uh, for maybe a few hours and fades away after 10 hours only. With this system right here, known as TV Columba, being the first to be discovered and also being the one studied the most. But even though the scientists refer to this as a micronova, it's still an extremely powerful explosion in human terms. And in terms of the total mass, the scientists compared this to being able to burn approximately 3 to 4 billion pyramids of Giza of pure hydrogen in order to create this explosion that lasts for a few hours. Just to give you a comparison, it's also roughly equivalent to the amount of hydrogen that our sun burns in a single year. But in this case, all of this seems to happen in just a few hours and in a very, very small area in the poles of a typical white dwarf, just a few hundred kilometers across. So the total amount of energy generated here and the actual explosion produced is still kind of mind blowing. With the actual events in this case very likely being extremely common as well, but because we didn't really know what they existed until now, they were never really seen before around any other system, and also they tend to happen pretty fast. And so it's really because of the modern telescope's ability to do what's known as rapid response astronomy that the scientists were able to discover this. So in the future we might find more. And so by looking around for other objects that have very strong magnetic fields and potentially have a partner from whom they can still mass, the scientists might be able to find even more of these unusual explosions and even more of these unusual phenomena. For now though, it's a pretty interesting discovery. Check out the paper and all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.